Hello everybody, hi, it's Derek at High Five Resale Shop. Um, this channel is about uh, what I sell on eBay. Um, trying to get information out to people who are trying to decide to make this their side hustle. Um, I wanted to start off with a little background information on myself. So um, I've been on a member on eBay. It says uh, since 2006, so about 18 years now. Um, at first, I just started selling out VHS and DVD tapes. Um, I actually got kicked off of Amazon because uh, I uh, treated a customer poorly. Um, and they kicked me out of their system uh, for an email that I sent a customer about a return. So uh, since then, I have changed my ways and to, <laughs> decided to be much nicer to people. Um, I was uh, having problems with returns uh, when people would watch stuff and then they just return it to me. It wasn't um, new anymore, so I couldn't sell it as new anymore. So I had issues with that, but uh, moved past that. So I worked, I used, did some Amazon stuff uh, with textbooks and CDs and DVDs and uh, VHS back in the day when that was still a thing. And then I um, got kicked off of there. I went strictly to Amazon, uh, strictly to eBay, and I've been on there ever since. Um, one of the first really big things that we did, uh, I'm talking about we, me, my wife and I. Uh, she really doesn't do much with eBay anymore, but when we started, she was part of it. And um, my dad knew somebody who needed help selling off uh, a state full of sports memorabilia so we did that and we sold uh what this woman thought was going to be like a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff we ended up making her close to 25 grand through um, ebay and you know we did like a halfsies kind of program with her so she made 25 we made 25 and that was good and it um started us and one of the last things I did on there was a box of musty old t-shirts from 1984, 1985. I know they were from those years because some of them was um, the Cubs and they went to the playoffs in 1984. Uh, this was back when I lived in Chicago. And, uh, and then the Bear stuff from 1985, 1986 Super Bowl season uh, with the 85 Bears. And so I knew that they were desirable to Chicago Bears fans, Chicago Cubs fans, but I didn't know how desirable they were as I didn't know anything about vintage t-shirts. So I sold uh, a, a bunch of those and um, I was doing only auctions at that point because I really didn't know anything you know, thing about researching stuff and I just let the market bear the value of whatever I was putting up, which is kind of what auctions do. And um, all these guys that you probably watch on YouTube now that are big time vintage dealers probably are the ones who bought these t-shirts from me. Um, Cause I do remember sending stuff to F as in Frank um, in New York or in, in up in Buffalo. I'm, I'm not sure exactly where he is, but he's a, he's like the granddaddy of, of vintage t-shirts and stuff like that. And some of these other stores, that have really high name, well documented names and stuff. So um, I remember selling that stuff back then, but I didn't have any place to place it. Um, I don't know if YouTube was really a thing. It was like just people posting videos of them gaming and how to fix cars and stuff at that point, but it wasn't as big a thing as it is today. And uh, so we did that, and that's where I learned when these t-shirts, these stinky old t-shirts with stains on them and everything, they sold for $50, $60, $80. And I was like, this is something. So I went to my local thrift store, which was like a block or two away in Chicago, and I just grabbed every sports-related thing in the men's t-shirt aisle that I could find, and I started selling them, and those sold. And I was like... Um, still working at the time, a uh, full-time job. So I uh, liked, uh, I, I wore dress shirts for that job. So 
I like dress shirts and I knew what I liked. So I started picking up dress shirts that were not my size, just any old size. That's a good thing about when you go out thrifting, you're not looking at sizes. Maybe, maybe you don't buy the extra smalls, but, and, uh, make sure there's a market for a 5X, but, uh, you really don't have to be concerned with the sizes too much. Um, and so just grab everything that we could and we spent a hundred dollars and turn it into four hundred dollars and then go back over there and take two hundred dollars and turn it into six hundred dollars and then we go back and do it and we got to the point where my wife and i would go to the thrift store on a saturday and basically spend four hours in the thrift store and we would have a shopping cart filled up to our chin and then we would switch each other would go do their thing and then we'd come back together switch carts and then we would take that card into a corner somewhere and we'd start checking it for stains for holes in the armpits and buttons that were missing and zippers that didn't work and stuff like that and we'd end up putting stuff back on the racks and, and stuff and uh, we'd leave we'd spend eight hundred dollars in one trip at a flea market and these were really big uh, thrift stores, um, Village Discount Thrift in Chicago. They're really big stores with a lot of stuff in them. So uh, we would leave with $800. Our whole back of our car would be filled. And then the next couple of weeks, we'd spend putting that stuff up. And um, and it basically got us to where we, we were making $100 a day uh, selling stuff on eBay. And we were cool with that. We started buying storage lockers, and then we went off in a completely different direction. I had an employee that would put stuff up on eBay for us, and we went the entire different direction because we found we could sell one dresser. And uh, if we found a mid-century modern dresser, we could sell that for four or $500, and it would take a couple of days. So we went off on this tangent of furniture and cleaning out houses, and Lindy, my wife, would put um, the furniture on Craigslist, which was a thing in Chicago, and it probably still is a thing, is better than Marketplace, because it's kind of flaky at Marketplace. But we did uh, that, and that's how we made our money uh, then, and kind of eBay just drifted away. Our employee decided she didn't want to come in one day and never came back, and um, we couldn't even get her on the phone, so that was interesting. And uh, eBay just kind of things sold. I shipped them out, but I really didn't put anything new up on there. I didn't spend a lot of time doing that. But eBay always made enough money to pay for itself. You know, the store subscription, the monthly fees and whatever that we would have. And it would pay for those. And we have a little bit left over for ourselves. And... The, we didn't even put any effort into it and stuff. So um, so we got it kicking really good. And then we, you know, forgot about it. And we neglected it. And uh, we did the furniture thing. And then we decided we wanted to move to Missouri to be closer to Lindy's parents. And uh, so the kids could be by their grandparents. And uh, we moved. And it was a great move and I tried to start eBay when I got back when I got everything unpacked and everything and and I did that for a while and it just wasn't making ends meet I probably didn't have good enough merchandise to make it happen um, I tried to lock myself in a room and just spend eight hours a day on it and it didn't seem to work so I decided to go get a regular job uh, in um, the retail space. So I had a lot of experience in, in warehouses and logistics. So I ended up running the back room at an at-home decor store. And I did that for four years. And then Old Navy uh, saw my resume on... Uh, I guess I guess it was specifically the manager saw my resume on LinkedIn and she called me and 
told me how much more they'd be willing to pay me than at home and I thought I prayed about it <laughs> well I did pray about it and God had me move over there and uh, yeah, I was miserable from the time I got there to the time I quit it was miserable but uh, there's a reason why God moved me over there because a job opened up at the other place and I would have totally tried to step into that position at at home and then would I have ever left to do this so but uh, anyway, I digress and uh, went to Old Navy, was miserable for about six months, and December 14th of 2021, I decided when there were three managers in the store at noon on a Tuesday, when there was nothing going on, I was like, I don't know why I'm here, this is a waste of my time because there's no reason to have three managers there on a day where nobody's gonna come in. It was December, but it was a Tuesday. And I mean, people are shopping in December, but not at noon on a Tuesday. Um, so I decided uh, to quit, uh, quit that job. And um, I had talked with my wife about going full-time. And so that was the day I quit and I decided to go full-time as an eBay reseller. I had some uh, money that I had uh, borrowed from my family, my mom, and uh, we started on this journey to become a full-time eBay reseller, uh, trying to pay all the bills with eBay. And my wife decided she wanted to go back to work. She's a therapist, and so she went back to work. Uh, probably about two months of me being home. So, uh, so that helped because she was starting to get paid and then I didn't have to pick up all the bills. But uh, it's been about a year and a half now and we're doing pretty good. eBay pays for its fair share of the bills and my wife pays her fair share of the bills. Together we make our ends meet and uh, that's where we are. Um, so 17 years, uh, we're I'm a top rated seller on eBay. I have been for a long time. I have about 11,400 feedbacks, positive feedbacks. Um, right now, I think I have three negative feedbacks for the year and over 800 positives. Um, sold over 25,000 items in the course of doing this for 17 years. I'm number one, I'm on the top 1% in about a dozen categories, um, both men's and women's tops, new and used. Uh, top one percent cds new and used top one percent audio books new and used top one percent skirts women's skirts new and used top one percent men's and women's pants new and used top one percent women's dresses top one percent women's shorts top one percent um i'm trying to think of anything else um new and used books top one percent um and i say all that to say i say all that and i'm still a very small fish in a, in a pretty big pond so i am in the top one percent of a lot of categories on ebay um i'm not the number one um the one that surprises me the most is the boyd's bears thing i'm like the top 50th seller somewhere around there of Boyd's Bears on eBay. Um, I do have a, quite a few from a um, consignment sale that I'm doing for somebody that it's taken years. Um, but uh, I don't want to be in the top 1% of that, but I am. Um, so uh, just recently we moved into the top 1% for CDs and new and used when we bought that CD store uh, around um, October of last year. So uh, that's where we're at. Um, my thought is if you're, um, you know, not quite there yet, um, it takes a lot of time. It takes uh, a lot of effort and it takes a lot of time. <clears throat> and I know there's a lot of people on YouTube tell you how to be this big time seller 
but you can't just get to the top in six months. It takes lots of little small deals to become a big deal. So um, I wasn't in the audiobook space until I bought the huge lot of audiobooks. And I wasn't in the CD space until I bought the CD store. And those, um, those big bulk buys kind of propel you forward into another level. So if it's like a tiered structure, um, everybody who part-time sells and just randomly sells, you know, one or two things, that's everybody at the bottom. And then you make a big purchase uh, or you go to garage sales every week and list all those items and you have a couple hundred items in your store, you go up to the next level. And then you make a big purchase and you go up to the next level. Um, so you just got to bide your time. Uh, it's not all going to happen overnight, but uh, eventually you can get to where you want to be if you put in the effort and you put in the time and um, are like consistent with it. Um, everybody tells you to got to list stuff every day. List stuff as often as you can. You know, if you can't do it every day, throw a couple in your draft bank, and then the day you can't list, you just pop two, pop two old listings that you have as drafts up. Okay, so uh, enough chit chat. Um, let's get into the stuff that sold over the weekend. We had uh, 25 items that sold over the weekend. Um, for a total of a uh, gross total of $400 and 69 cents. And let's go through those things that sold. So this morning, this audiobook sold red light by T Jefferson Parker. This sold for $5 and 60 cents plus shipping on top. The next item that sold, uh, let me see if I can get this bag open. It is an NFL replica football from 2004, 2005, with autographs from the Pittsburgh Steelers on it. This sold for $15 plus shipping on top. It isn't in the greatest condition. That's why it's not worth more. Um, but here it is. Um, got a lot of dings and spots on it and everything. Um, Jerome Bettis is on here. Um, Jerry, um, I can't remember his name. Porter. Uh, let's go into the listing and see here. Deuce Staley, I think, was on here. Let's see here. Okay, Joey Porter is on here, Super Bowl champion. Casey Hampton, Super Bowl champion. Jerome Bettis, Super Bowl champion. Do Staley, Super Bowl champion. And then, a and I think a random, well, I put question marks, I don't know, but a Juju Smith-Schuster Sh on here. And so, several different Super Bowl, several different years for players, maybe at a um, training camp or something like that. But, uh, okay, so that's that sold for $15, plus shipping on top. <coughs> I kept it in the bag just so that it didn't get any more dings than it already had. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's go back to the sold items. Okay, um, and somebody just bought uh, a special lot that I made for them. They wanted um, it specially made. So these magazines, a whole bunch of them. So it's like got a Paul McCartney. Um, let me see. Hold on. So Paul McCartney. The White Album, Meet the Beatles, or With the Beatles, uh, Life uh, Magazine, The Beatles, 
and then this uh, Beatles in 1969 so they bought those they bought Led Zeppelin Freddie Mercury songs and the story stories behind the songs Um, this Mick Jagger, Sting, Prince. And then this one, 1980s Madonna. There were two different versions of this magazine. Uh, Tina Turner and the Go-Go's. So those magazines, um, three times. I think there's 15. I'm not sure. Maybe 14 or 15. Those magazines sold to one person. Uh, I had to adjust the listings, delete you know, delete quantities and stuff to create this, but it sold for $35.50, and it charged them shipping. And I don't know why I put no shipping on there. I'm gonna have to refund them. Oh, maybe tax. Okay. They probably paid tax on it. So they $35.50 is what that gentleman paid for those. And I thank him. And I think I'll throw in one of my new stickers in there for him. But that was a really good sale. $35.50 for those. Um, the next item that sold was a book. The Holiest of All. An exposition of the epistle to the Hebrews. So it's a fairly large book um, by Andrew Murray. New new book there. That sold for $6 plus shipping on top. The next thing that sold was this vintage Lee Parfait locking jar with uh, the, uh, the rubber seal is not decayed or anything like that. It's made in France. Um, this sold for $12.60 plus shipping on top. Um, <clears throat> to a different person, um, sold this uh, three magazine set. And inside here is the Stories and Songs uh, magazine that was in the other one. And then a Fleetwood Mac uh, magazine and a Stevie Nicks magazine. So this sold to another customer and that sold for $10.50 plus shipping on top. Um, the next item that sold is a Barbie Reveal Cutie. Um, I bought this from Facebook Marketplace. The lady had a batch of Barbies um, for sale and a batch of Polly Pockets for sale. And I bought them both. And so, it comes with a bunch of accessories. So, it's the Barbie, and it has this like deer costume. And then some accessories like a boots for the Barbie and there's a little little reindeer doll there in there. But all that came with that Barbie and it sold for eleven ninety nine uh, plus shipping on top. Let me put this back in the bag. Um, there were like seven Barbies. Um, one was like a like a Canadian or a um, European uh, Barbie that isn't um, there aren't a lot up on eBay so I was able to put each of those Barbies up for like $18 um, at this point selling two Barbies I have paid for the whole thing I still have all the Polly Pocket stuff left on, left and I still have five or six Barbies so um, that's good Eleven ninety nine plus shipping on top. The next item that sold were a pair of shoes, sandals, women's sandals, 
Um, Romica Women's, uh, nine and a half. Uh, open toe sandal. This came from the estate closet um, clean out. And that sold for $16.80 plus shipping on top. The next item that sold was a skirt. Um, it's a black silk skirt with like a ruffle bottom. It's from Alf Alfani. It's a size 14 and it's 100% uh, sil silk. It sold for $11.20 plus shipping on top. The next item that sold is a Reiki's Bear 1998 Jason. Um, so these are the bears that have the wooden faces. And uh, he's still got his tag on him. He's got the box that it came with. Um, so that'll be an interesting one to pack for sure. That sold for $10 plus shipping on top. I wish those things were worth more. They're so huge. Um, the lady I listened to online says to buy the ones that are limited edition. And the, it would say limited edition on their f wooden foot. You would see a number uh, for them. Maybe that has it. I don't know. It's been so long since I listed these and just really forgot about them. I mean, it's been going two or three years See, it is numbered on the bottom there. But you obviously know that the more they made, the less they're worth. This is uh, 1,512 uh, 1, out of 10,000. So maybe the ones that are numbered to 5,000 or whatever would be more valuable. $10 plus shipping on top. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next one that sold is Heat Waves Greatest Hits. $3.50 plus shipping on top. The next item that sold is a book called Song of the Seasons. It is a library book, an ex library book. And um, it's by Addison Webb. And it's been checked out probably, it was probably checked out six or seven times. Um, so it's really in good condition um, for the most part. Um, book from 1950 and it's a hardcover. Sold for $6 plus shipping on top. The next item that sold is a skirt. It's a corduroy gray skirt. Um, pockets here on the side no no yes there's pockets in the front pockets in the rear corduroy j crew um size 14 and that sold for 12 dollars plus shipping on top i don't know what that was Okay, $12 plus shipping on top. The next item is Trey's Lounge um, CD soundtrack to the movie. It sold for $2.80 plus shipping on top. The next item that sold is, uh, I'm sorry, three Hannah Montana CDs. Hannah Montana, Hannah Montana 2, and Hannah Montana 3. Um, the soundtrack to the uh, Disney movie for them. Sold for $8.40 plus shipping on top. The next thing that sold was Murder by Death. Who will survive and what will be left of them? Um, it says Indie Garage Rock. $5.60 plus shipping on top. The next thing is called Surprise Your Pig, a tribute to R.E.M. 
This sold for $2.37 plus shipping on top. I try not to sell things that cheap, but I no one was interested in this CD and it's better just to get rid of it. Uh, the next item was a pair of Hollister shorts, size zero. Um, so these sold for $4.55 plus shipping on top. Uh, the next thing that sold was a metal lunchbox, uh, Tootsie Roll, 2008 Loungefly. Um, it's got raised uh, uh, front and back, and it sold for six dollars plus shipping on top. Um, the next item was a dress. Um, Bluet ivory scoop neck with um, with that tie in the front. It's a uh, it's a two X, um, really nice looking dress. Um, that sold for seven dollars plus shipping on top. Um, why seven dollars? Probably because of the off brand name. It's not really a name brand um, that people know, so it's going to be hard. For people to see it and search it, and it's just going to fall through the cracks until somebody does see it. By typing in probably 2X and Ivory, they were looking for an Ivy dress that was 2X, and that's how they found it. Because if it was Ralph Lauren, it had been gone. So This is Todd Rundgren, something, anything, is the is the title of the CD. Uh, that sold for five dollars plus shipping on top. I'm pretty sure this might be going out of the country, um, but it's a vintage 1970s uh, blue and white floral men's shirt. It's got some defects on it. Um, down at the bottom, there were a couple holes, like cigarette burns. I did disclose that and show that in the listing. Um, but it's pretty cool pattern. It's got the butterfly collar. Um, fourteen dollars plus shipping on top for that. Uh, the next item, this I've probably had for four years now. Uh, I don't know why it didn't sell. It's just name brand issue again. It's from the manufacturer Poof. It's got this little floral thing up here. It's just a orange tank. It's still got the tag on it. It's still got um, this tag, on, the hang tag on it. Um, it sold for three dollars plus shipping on top. It's got a shelf bra in there as well. Three dollars plus shipping on top. The next thing that sold was uh, the Adequate Man, uh, Paul in the Philippines by F Paul Reese. This sold for $3 plus shipping on top. Um, the next thing that sold was this DVD, How to Study the Bible by Joyce Meyer. Um, this sold for $4.90 plus shipping on top. And the last thing I really haven't pulled yet, it's going to take me a while, it's back there. It is a single um, baseball card um, from 1983, True Value, uh, Chicago White Sox promo, uh, and it's of Greg Luginski. And that sold for $2.80 plus shipping on top. Um, that is everything that sold, plus the new item that sold like five minutes ago. <coughs> uh, that sold over the weekend. So we will package these up and get them to the post office. Um, it's kind of going to be tough today. Uh, I'm going to have to probably go into town to the post office. I can't probably go to my town's post office. I have to go into the city's post office because I will not get to these things and done until 530. So, but that is what it is. I will get as many packaged up and out of here as I can, uh, as quickly as I can. Um, if you have any comments, uh, comment down below, like subscribe, tell your friends about this 
Um, I think we're at 57 uh, subscribers, trying to get to 100, and then on from there. But um, that's all I got for you today. High Five Resale Shop, and we'll see ya. Peace.